Welcome back, Mr. Goodberry. The first Star Logistics Studio is fully equipped and ready to record. The Bengals moved to four and three and put the rest of the league on notice. We said they were back a couple weeks ago after that Cardinals performance, but now everyone is saying they're back. Everyone's saying Joe Burrow is back after you beat a team like the 49ers who went to two straight NFC championship games, very similar to the Bengals. They could have met in the playoffs or in the Super Bowl uh, each of the last two years in a different universe once again, but beating them as handedly as they did, 31-17. And it could have been, I think anybody that watched it, could have been like a 45-17 to type game ahead. Everything had gone the Bengals' way. Everything doesn't go your way when you're playing another good team, so I think we'll take the victory as it stands. When you score 30 and hold another team under 20, especially a team as, as good as the 49ers are, we will take that all day. And if that means the Bengals are back and Joe Burrow is back, well, then that means the Bengals are scary for everyone else in the NFL. Once again, this is Bengals on the Brain. I'm your host, Joe Goodberry. The show is brought to you by First Star Logistics. If you missed it, they announced the winner. Well, I got the announced winner for the Custom Crosley Jukebox, which is pretty awesome. The next giveaway is up. It is a custom Xbox Series X. Hey, you get that. You win that because that's what I play. We'll play together. So get in on that. Enter that contest. And let's dive into the tape today. First, though. I, it just came to me. Because of how good Joe Burrow played, let's talk about the game a little bit more. Joe Burrow, excellent game, right? A-plus performance in a lot of ways. Only had one throw on that first drive where I was like, eh. The one that chased that I thought could have been picked off. Other than that, flawless victory. Some saying his best game ever. I don't know if it is. I know what my top five games for Joe Burrow are, and two of them might be against the 49ers. That game that went in the overtime that the Bengals lost in 2021 that was like our first game that we knew burrow was well for me my first game that i was like yeah he's special and he's going to be okay in this offense with zach taylor and frank allen i mean we had glimpses before that but i thought so highly of the niners there and when he took over in the second half and made some crazy throws that spin around throw to jamar chase back of the end zone i was like yep that's the joe burrow we need uh but the other games for me so if i've got two 49ers games in the top five I also think the the Chiefs game in 2021 to win the division, Jamar Chase goes off, but Burrow was nuts. I mean, they were coming after him and, and trying to blitz him, and he was taking it. Remember his jersey, he had, the back of his, the name got ripped off his jersey. Uh, that's one of them. And then I have probably the Titans playoff game where he got sacked nine times, and it wasn't some huge statistical performance for him, but he kept getting up, kept making plays. Uh, was efficient enough, and at the end, they needed a throw. They had time for maybe two plays. They needed a throw, and he nailed the corner route to Jamar Chase. Very similar to how he hit this one against four Niners. Then I have the, the Bills game in the snow last year in the playoffs. So I've got two playoff games in there, a Chiefs game in there. I mean, those are the best teams. Those are the teams you need to play. I could have said the 525 game against the Ravens. He's had a lot of good games against the Steelers. Yeah. What would be in your top five? Any different games? And maybe I'm something I'm missing. Whew, let's dive into the tape, though. I've got the plays that won the game this week. So we've got offense. We've got defense. These are the ones that decided it. There was a bunch. Uh, it could have, you know, the game almost got too close for comfort. Could have got out of hand early. I thought the Bengals had a chance to put it away when the Irv Smith fumble happened. 49ers almost came down and scored. But you could have. Had the final drive, got a touchdown, got the first drive in the second half, which ended up being a field goal. But if you would have put 10 points up there, the game would have been over at that point. But it wasn't. And they needed the defense to make the plays, and they needed the offense to finish the game. And they did. So let's dive in. So this is from the first drive. And while this play may have not decided the game, it is third and 10. The Bengals need to keep the drive alive. They need to score again for the third straight week. Uh, on their opening drive, which I think makes the defense that much better when you can do that. As we've seen the last three weeks, they've been pretty good on defense. But point being is, the rush is going to get home. Burrow's got to create a little magic. How's his calf, right? How are things going? What, if this fails, we start worrying about 
can the whole line hold up against Nick Bosa and Eric Armstead and a host of other players that the 49ers have on their defensive side? Is it going to be their day? Are they, uh, how's the play calling today? All the factors that are into it. And Joe Burrow looks healthy right away, delivers a strike, and fends off uh, about $100 million worth of 49ers defenders. So let's take a look. As he looks right, comes back and looks left. Of course he does, as Joe Burrow does. And then a little pressure to his left, so he braces himself. He drops back with his eyes up, which is how you're supposed to do it. Sees the rushers coming, knows I need to climb the pocket to generate some power to shrug off Eric Armstead, which he does. Nick Bosa, you see him, got a grip on him. Joe Burrow's going to switch the ball to his left hand, help throw off Nick Bosa with the help from Alex Kappa. Flip around, turn, get the ball into his right hand, get his eyes back up, see what he's doing, get himself back into a throwing posture as Fred Warner is bearing down on him, absolutely crushes him too, and lays a perfect place ball. That's a dot, as the kids say. And T. Higgins stretches for that first down and gets it. And the Bengals are in business. But watch, watch Troy Walters. He's feeling it down there. I watch the whole sideline just erupt. I like everyone on here. I, I don't know what this uh, celebration is by this guy up here, but with the arms swinging. But I'm into it. I feel that. Yeah, that's a good celebration. I like Jordan Battle down there flexing. Don't know who he's flexing at. These guys are clapping like that was the play call. That's exactly how you draw it up. So I enjoy that a lot. Bengals uh, using the hard count. Joe Burrow hard count away at the 49er stadium at their home they look left but you got two guys going over there from the 49ers they're doubling jamar chase they're okay i got a free play here no one else is really going out in routes here let me roll to the right and hit andre yoshivash for another broken play touchdown both of his touchdowns have been like that as he sees he's looking back he goes okay burrow's scrambling my way i need to get open so do you go back inside i think he just uses this to get the guy off of him so by going back inside, you get the weight shift to the corner, and then you throw him down, get yourself free, and then come back to Burrow, hands catch, toes and bounds, touchdown for the rookie. Very impressive. The Bengals haven't had a day three rookie receiver score more than one touchdown in his rookie season ever. Yanji, Andre Yoshivash, Yoshi, now has two, both on broken plays. Burrow throwing on the run. Two feet in, touchdown. Maybe even three feet. Nice catch by the rookie. Nice play. Nice More mobility from the Bengals quarterback early in the game, showing us uh, that he is all the way back. So the 49ers, this game's a little close at this point. I believe it's 14, it's 17-10, and the Niners are driving back down the field. They're trying to get back in it. They're trying to tie it up. They're in this inside the 10. This is when the defense is, this is a bend but don't break. You're going to bend all the way down the field, and then you're going to clamp down when the area of the field. You don't have to worry about getting beat over your head, right? Because you, I mean, you can't, you can't throw the ball more than 18 yards down the field, or else it's out of the back of the end zone. This is when they're at their best. This is when they seem to make plays when their back's against the wall. 49ers come out 21 personnel, two running backs, one tight end, two receivers. So typically, a team would come out with their base 3-4-4-3 three, four, four, three defense. You don't need a nickel corner because there's only two receivers out there. Bengals don't do that. They're going to go out there with their nickel corner. They're going to go out there with Mike Hilton. They're going to treat Christian McCaffrey as a wide receiver. Because look at him. That's McCaffrey up at the circle at the top. He's actually lined up like a wide receiver. So those are your two receivers there. Kittle goes in motion. And you see Mike Hilton communicating already. Like he knows. He's, he's telling the other guys, hey, shift over. Here comes the motion. Here comes McCaffrey. And he was right. And it's almost like a, a jet motion, option motion, then a shovel pass. Tries to flip it to a running back that's downfield. Jermaine Pratt makes an insane interception. There's our guy right there. There's our hero of the play. Jermaine Pratt, number 57, playoff P in playoff form here with his clutch play. Here's the jet motion. It's meant to widen out your defense. You want to get Nick Scott, Jermaine Pratt to go wide so that you can hit the shovel pass in between them and Sam Hubbard if you can. And they have run action built in here. Like they can hand it off also and leave McCaffrey as the lead blocker. Again, hoping to string that defense out. And then here comes the shovel. And as Purdy looks, he meets eyes with Sam Hubbard. Hubbard's doing a great job here. He's got one hand on Kittle and he's got eyes on Purdy. So Purdy's like, okay, that's not there. I need to bail out. So eyes back on Pratt. Pratt's going to play both here, the running back and contain the quarterback as Hubbard 
is chasing him down from the backside. And once Purdy decides to throw, I mean, that lane looked open to him. And he just stabs it with one hand, ends up pulling it down. And look how he eyes Kyle Shanahan as he goes by him, which I think it's hilarious. The very next offensive play for the 49ers, the other linebacker. Dynamic duo in the middle of the field for the Bengals defense. Ball is picked off by Logan Wilson over the middle of the field. Two in a row. And the Bengals defense is celebrating. Let's see what happens. There's Logan Wilson there. There's our guy. Keep an eye on him. As you've got a cover two situation. At least it looks that way. He opens his hips towards the, the, the side that has more receivers which I think Purdy thinks I've got this. Then he gets his eyes on the quarterback, flips his hips back inside, and just makes a nice play on the ball. Uh, so while he does his thing, and he looks really good flipping his hips, getting his eyes on it, and, and making a, a nice catch here, I want to go back to the wide angle and break this down a little bit more if we can on X's and O's here. It looks like a sit glance route where you're trying to put this linebacker in conflict, where you have one guy sit next to him or in front of him and have the linebacker or have the wide receiver dig behind the linebacker. So as you see, McCaffrey's going to come up and he's going to sit and it looks like he's open here. So you could hit this if you wanted to. You're going to see if the linebacker is going to take him or not. It ends up being Mike Hilton that comes down and gets on him. And this actually looks like quarters or, or even cloud coverage. Logan Wilson, I don't think he expects him to be there, but you have two receivers running the route in the middle of the field. This is almost like one of these guys writing, running the wrong route because I don't expect to see him there. But Wilson doesn't bite on the the sit or the, the glance because Mike Hilton's got it. So good combination between those two. We'll get, we'll get to another play with them again later where they're patrolling the middle of the field. And it's like Mike Hilton's almost playing a safety linebacker, hybrid joker type defender for this defense. And he's playing really well lately. So shout out to Mike Hilton there, uh, really helping that play get forced to, to Logan Wilson's side. So the Bengals need to respond. Right away. Next play. And if you remember, if you're on Twitter and we talk a lot during the game, right? We vent. We, hey, this is happening. I wonder if they'll hit this. I wonder if they'll go to this. All these things, right? During the game. It's, it's loads of fun if you've never done it. But they're running screen passes like crazy. They're, they've got, we've done this on, on the show before. We showed how many screens are built into their plays. And the Irv Smith play comes up right before half, and he fumbles the ball on a quick screen to Irv Smith. And people are like, why are they calling that? Why are you throwing it to Irv Smith? Um, why, how many screens can you throw to Jamar Chase? These were the questions and the complaints. But the Bengals have it built in so many plays that it's an option of Burrow to take it or not. He can hand the ball off or he can hit the screen. So when they get to this point of the game, they've got the screen built in again, right? They, they're going to – they've showed this – 10 to 15 times already in the first half and you got the run action. You're hoping to pull these linebackers up and you're just running it and running it and running. You're hitting the screen or handing it off, hitting the screen or handing it off. This time they've got it set up and Chase is going to fake block and then release. And it's a slot fade. And he's wide open. The safety's stuck in the middle of the field because he's respecting that run. The action's correct. The, the linemen can't really rush because they think, hey, it's either a screen or they're actually going to run it. So all the linemen are, are stacking and peaking. Is this a run play? Oh, it's not. Now let me pass rush. It's too late. Ball's out. It's already in Jamar Chase's hands by the time they realize it's a pass. And Jamar Chase does a backflip, which the camera guy cuts off on us and doesn't let us enjoy the full thing. So offense, that was the nail in the coffin, I think. This was probably throwing dirt on it after they're buried. Joe Mixon looked great. He had some burst. He looked like he was shot out of a cannon. He looked as agile as he has in a long time. And a lot of people said, well, the under center stuff. You're right. That does help the running game. It allows them to be more dynamic. It allows them to do more, more things out of it. But this is a good example, a shotgun run. He still looks great in it. And Mixon in his career has averaged more from shotgun than he has under center. Point is, at this point in the game, when you've run so successfully and you've been running it inside duos and inside zones, it's going to force everyone on that defense to collapse inside. 
and watch all these second, even third level defenders for the Niners all collapse inside. Tyler Boyd gets a great block on 29 Hafunga. You see both uh, receivers on the outside are going to come and hopefully get both of these DBs. Boyd right there on 29. I want to say Irwin's supposed to get the corner, but he's going for the safety also, ends up missing. And a lot of people are going to blame Nick Bosa for this and say, hey, you got to set the edge. You've got to make this tackle. But I think 26 and 2 are way sucked inside. And they're supposed to be the guys to, to stay on the outside here. Mixon bursts out, does his dance, high stepping into the end zone, looking good. Best game of the year for Joe Mixon, rejuvenating this offense, getting the run game going. I am excited about that. But here is where I want to talk about the Mike Hilton play. Eyes on him. This play ended up not counting. But it's such a good and mental processing play for Hilton. as he, He's got eyes over there. And, and watch McCaffrey. McCaffrey looks back at the quarterback. Those eyes, they connect. Hilton's going to be like, oh, should I? This is a slant. Should I run up and, and hit this now? And then he sees McCaffrey, puts his head down, and runs back upfield. So he stops and plants. And you see him. I don't want to over pursue here. And then there's pressure coming up the middle. You see Kish, Christian McCaffrey sitting down. And now Hilton's like, now, let me go. And when he does, he fires, intercepts it, patrolling that middle of the field, and should have closed the game off. They said that Hendrickson and, and Reader hit the quarterback too low. You can't hit at the thigh and then slide down to the knee. I think because both of them hit him at the same time and really knocked him back. So far, it made it look like they hit him at the knees. They didn't. They just set him. I mean, the two of them hit him at the exact same time. Purdy went flying. So this is the play. You ever hear the phrase, ball don't lie? Because the ball knows. The ball knows that that play should have been turned over. It should have been the end of the game. It should have been uh, should have been picked off. That should have been it. So in the very next play, the Bengals are going to get the ball. The ball don't lie. And that's what that means. As Trey Hendrickson runs around the arc, Forces the fumble and BJ Hill picks it up. So number 91 with an ankle injury that happened early in the game, making plays, closing games as he does. And he's so wide here. His stance is, is he's far out from that left tackle, which when he comes off the ball, gives him a two way go. Cause look at the split between left guard, left tackle. He can go inside. He can go outside. It gives you the freedom when you've got that wide nine position out there as a rusher and he's going to go with power and then the outside rip. He actually misses with his right hand here. Watch it. He's trying to get that hand off him. Doesn't matter. He's going against a backup lineman. And the closing speed right there. That was full speed. Let's slow it down. Knock the ball out. Great job by Hendrickson. Good job by BJ Hill, which you probably could have scored. Stayed on your feet. Cam Taylor Britt loves it. Let's watch the celebration in the dance. Bengals, four and three. These are the plays that won the game. So those were the plays. The Bengals win dismantling the 49ers. 49ers are reeling right now. While the Bengals look to be getting hot at the right time. I think we said before, if they go one and one, splitting between the 49ers and the Bills, we would take that. But now, I say we go win the whole damn thing. Let's go beat the Bills this Sunday night. I mean, what a game. A lot of good games, actually, in the whole, the whole slate. You got Chiefs, Dolphins, and Germany all the way through to the Monday night games. It's Great week for football. I'll be heading down to Cincinnati. We've got one more episode. Until then, I just, you know, I'm excited. First Star is bringing me out there, putting me up in the suite, doing their thing as they do always. Uh, so if you see me down there, and my brother too, Bill's fan, he, we're heading that way. Uh, make sure you say, say hi, stop by, spend a few minutes with us talking ball. I'm always down for that. But this has been your episode. This is episode, can you believe it, 29. Every time I say it, I'm I'm shocked. I appreciate all of you guys. Make sure you get in on the contest. Make sure you hit the like. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Make sure you know when First Star's got things coming up, videos coming out on the First Star Media page here. I mean, Malik's always got stuff. Always great shows with him. Dave Lapham in the locker room. That guy knows. He's got the, the pulse of the team, and he's had it for forever, Mr. Bengal himself. So you get a lot of great content when you subscribe to this channel. There's stuff every single day at this point. And the Bengals are on a roll. So as you can tell, it's Halloween. I'm excited. I'm ready to put my suit on and go out there with the kids and have a good time. So who day? Happy Halloween. Friday show. Big one. Bengals Bills this Sunday night. <laughs>
Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.